I'm a Carpenterian. I didn't grow up here myself, but I raised two kids here. I hope I live here for the rest of my life. Maybe you don't worry about things like sea level rise. Maybe you think climate change is a hoax, or at least that the risks are being exaggerated. I'm not trying to change your mind, but for myself, I do worry about sea level rise and what it might do to Carpinteria. So I made this video. I hope you'll watch it and let me know what you think. I'm John Callender. I'm not a scientist. I'm a programmer and a bird watcher. For the last 10 years, I've been a member of the Carpinteria Planning Commission, but the things I talk about in this video are very much my own views as a private citizen not the views of the Planning Commission or of the city of Carpinteria. Here's a map of Carpinteria from 1869. In those days, the Carpinteria salt marsh extended all the way to the mouth of Carpinteria Creek. The Coastal Railroad line in Carpinteria detours inland because in the 1890s when the tracks were laid down, this whole area next to the coast, including Linden Field and the beach neighborhood west of Linden Avenue, all of this was salt marsh. In this video, I'm going to focus on the beach neighborhood, but all the development on Carpinteria's former marshland and on the beachfront dunes is similar in its vulnerability to sea level rise. The thing about the salt marsh is, it's low, and it's flat, and because it's connected to the ocean, the rising and falling tides have a big effect on it. Large parts of the marsh go from being dry at low tide, to being flooded at high tide. Also, the tides themselves change from day to day and month to month. If you average the highest tides each day for 17 years, you get an elevation called mean higher high water. A few times a month, though, you get especially high tides, called spring tides. In Carpinteria, they average about a foot higher than mean higher high water. And about four times a year, you get even higher tides, called king tides. Those are almost two feet higher than mean higher high water. Finally, every so often, something like a big storm makes the tide go even higher. The experts at FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, say a flood height of three feet above mean high or high water has about a 2% chance of happening in Carpinteria's beach neighborhood in any given year, while four feet above mean high or high water has about a 1% chance of happening. FEMA calls these 50-year and 100-year floods, but the floods don't follow a regular schedule the way ordinary tides do. They can happen at any time. This map of the Carpinteria Beach neighborhood is based on something called the Digital Coast Tool from NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. It uses elevation data to let you simulate flooding at different heights to see what that would look like. The map shows an average high tide, mean higher high water, as it occurs now with no sea level rise. Flooded areas are shown in blue. Yellow areas might be flooded. The ground there is below the flood level, but the elevation data doesn't see a path for the water to get in there. As it turns out, that basin along Ash Avenue that's shown in yellow does flood because it's connected to the Franklin Creek Channel by a big pipe, but the digital coast tool doesn't know about that. When you put together the blue and yellow areas, you get what you can think of as the daily floodplain. That is, it's the area that's subject to flooding on a daily basis. If you raise the water level by one foot, the amount of the monthly spring tides, you get a map of the monthly floodplain. One foot more, corresponding to the several times a year king tides, and you get a map of the annual floodplain. And finally, if you raise the water level one more foot, that is three feet above mean higher high water, you get a map of the 50-year floodplain. Again, just as a reminder, 50-year floodplain doesn't mean it floods every 50 years, it means there's a 2% chance it will flood in any given year. There are a few interesting changes on the 50-year flood map. One is that the basin along Ash Avenue is now shown in blue rather than yellow. That's because the digital coast tool now sees a path for the water to follow to get in there. The other interesting change is that the map now shows an area in yellow outside the marsh in the residential beach neighborhood. This is that spot at the corner of Ash Avenue and 3rd Street. 
In this case, the yellow shading on the map is accurate. There isn't a way for the water to get in here from the marsh. So as long as the flooding doesn't happen too often or last too long, it's probably okay from a flood safety standpoint. So, looking at these four maps together, you get a pretty clear picture of overall flood safety for the beach neighborhood today. There's some flood risk, but the risk is manageable with things like making property owners have flood insurance and making them build any new structures with a raised foundation so the ground floor is above the 100-year flood elevation. Both of those are things the city of Carpinteria currently does in this neighborhood, and I think those policies make sense in terms of managing the current flood risk there. Now, let's see what happens if we add one foot of sea level rise. Basically, each map moves up one spot, and we get a new 50-year flood map at the lower right. I want to focus on the bottom two maps. The map in the lower left, which shows the king tide scenario with one foot of sea level rise added, is the same as that 50-year flood map with no sea level rise that we were just looking at. Now that it's happening more often, though, it's more of a problem. Even though that yellow shaded area is still protected by the surrounding high ground, it's worrisome that that condition is now happening several times a year. The map in the lower right, showing the new 50-year flood map, is also troubling. At that flood elevation, there's now a path for the water to follow, and it floods a substantial part of the beach neighborhood. So, from a flood safety standpoint, one foot of sea level rise would be cause for some worry. Let's add one more foot and see what that looks like. At two feet of sea level rise, we're seeing definite problems. The king tide scenario in the lower left now shows substantial flooding every year. The 50-year flood scenario on the lower right has likewise gotten worse. It now includes most of the neighborhood. Also, these maps don't show the depth of flooding, but it's important to realize that the areas that were already flooding in the previous maps are now flooding that much deeper, which corresponds to greater flood damage. As I mentioned, the city requires new construction in this neighborhood to have raised foundations so the ground floor is at or above FEMA's 100-year flood elevation. That's about four feet higher than today's mean higher high water. Unfortunately, with two feet of sea level rise, the additional three feet of a 50-year flood would mean that even with those raised foundations, the ground floor of those structures would be a foot underwater. And of course, older homes built before the raised foundations policy would experience worse flooding. Let's add one more foot and see what that looks like. Three feet of sea level rise is a disaster for the beach neighborhood. The upper right-hand map shows breakout flooding happening every month. The lower left-hand map shows flooding above the level of today's raised foundations every year. The 50-year flood map in the lower right shows almost the whole beach neighborhood underwater. There's also a new problem area, shown in yellow, and hopefully protected by the raised berm of the railroad tracks on the north side of the tracks, in the area of 5th Street and Ash Avenue. Looking at this last set of maps makes it clear. Sea level rise really seems to have it in for the beach neighborhood. It shouldn't be surprising that even small amounts of sea level rise are a problem here. The developers who built this neighborhood used fill dirt to raise the land above the tides. But fill dirt costs money, so they didn't add any more than they had to. In a sense, market forces have given us a beach neighborhood that is highly optimized for the current sea level. As a result, even one foot of sea level rise starts to be a problem, while two to three feet makes the problem severe. So, Carpentria's beach neighborhood would have serious flood safety problems with two to three feet of sea level rise. But maybe that much sea level rise won't happen, or will take so long to happen that we don't need to worry about it. What do experts say about how much sea level rise to expect, and when to expect it? I'll talk about that in my next video.